When was the last time you thought about testing when building your Tableau workbooks? In today's world, what we typically do is we build them in desktop or in web edit. We then publish them up to the server. We use them like a user would, and we essentially open that up to the business that they too can see those checks. Once that's happened, we sort of call that quality assurance. We move it maybe to the appropriate project and it goes public. That is our testing process. Now, if you're in an enterprise setup, you definitely do a lot more than this. You maybe have dedicated testing teams, but one of the big issues with all of this is that it's manual. It's actually quite time intensive. If you add up all the combined time of everyone involved, it's actually quite a tough amount of time to swallow. And the other thing here is it's not very easily repeatable. Let's say the team changes, someone else builds a workbook, you might all have different testing approaches and you might not actually be testing the same thing. Now, what if you could test a workbook based on a set of requirements and more importantly, you could automate it? That's exactly what I'm gonna be covering in today's video where I'm gonna check out a tool that helps you do this. Let's get stuck in. Now, if you're a testing aficionado, skip ahead to the next chapter. You probably know all this already, but I thought I'd covered the basics of testing and what it is exactly we test along with some testing terminology. So let's start with the first thing. When you test a workbook, what you typically want to do is test its functionality. You wanna test that filters, parameters work. You wanna make sure that they've been set to the correct values. You wanna make sure that all the values appear in the filter that should be there. You also wanna do a few things like click on a few items, make sure everything is in the right place. But you might also have some guidelines. Examples are corporate guidelines that tell you how to build a dashboard, where to put the logo, how much space to leave on the left-hand side panel, where to put filters. These are all things that some organizations do uh, clearly sort of want you to do every single time you build a dashboard. This is typically known as functional testing. You're testing that the technical aspects of the dashboard are set up and work the way they should. Now, the next type of test you might do is something called regression testing. And this is actually very similar to cross environment testing, apart from one thing. In regression testing, what you're doing is you're taking a snapshot of a workbook, you're testing its performance and its capability. Once you've taken that snapshot, you're comparing all future tests against that baseline, but you're keeping it on the same environment. So an example is you might publish something to production. This might be something that everyone's using. And then from that point onwards, you're basically testing against that version, that snapshot. You're testing the performance, you're testing the capability. And what you're looking for is a regression in its performance. And that allows you to then go in and troubleshoot and see if something has caused that or see if the data set has changed to cause that, or even see if your whole environment has changed and that's what's causing the issues. It's a very common type of test. Now, cross environment testing is actually very similar. And so for this time, you're testing between two different environments. Here, you're testing maybe between your dev and your production sites on Tableau Server, which in some cases actually runs on the same hardware. If that's not the case, then this is probably gonna make more relevance because you might have resource constraints on dev versus production if you're doing them as physically separate servers, or if you're running them on the same server, you might have resource limitations, which is new in 22.1 that you might be working around. So essentially, you just wanna make sure that everything is working as it should do between two environments. The last type of testing you might want to do is something called performance testing. Now, in the Tableau world, performance testing is something that happens all the time, but there's sometimes a sort of a mixed methodology and ways of doing this. In this particular case, we're talking about the performance that the end user sees. So is the workbook fast to load? Is it responsive? When they select the filter, does it change the dashboard quickly and efficiently? Or are there issues to do with the server infrastructure that's causing these issues? Performance testing will pick these out and enable you to sort of drill down into what exact part of the pipeline is causing these issues. That's pretty much all the testing types that we do in the Tableau world. There's more if you go to other sort of technologies and industries, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Okay, now that we've covered that, we're ready to get stuck into this tool. But before I do, I just wanna make a couple of things clear. The tool I'm gonna be looking at today is called Wisdom Ops. Now they reached out to me a long time ago. It's actually been my bad for not getting to this video a lot sooner than I have done. Uh, life got in the way and I just wasn't able to make this video in the standard that I wanted in a good time. Now, the second thing to bear in mind here is that they've not sponsored me to make this video. They've not sort of asked me for a favorable review. This is genuinely my impression of using this tool. That said, I'm also not a testing expert. I'm not someone who spends a lot of time testing. Uh, when I typically go into clients, I'm a consultant. So I tend to hand over my work to someone else who does the testing. So I also don't have the sort of thorough testing experience that I should have in order to be able to review this tool. So this is also not a review. It's purely my impressions of working with a tool like this. And there'll be a lot of opinion and commentary, but please don't take that as fact or as any sort of statement of what you should think about the product. 
Now, the very last thing is that they gave me access to a trial period. Now, anyone can get a trial period of up to 14 days, but they actually gave me an extended trial so that I could work on this video a little bit better. So that's pretty much the extent of the support they've given me. Now that that's all clear and out of the way, Let's hop into the tool and check it out. Okay, so here we are. I'm actually using Windows for this video. I could have used the Mac version, but I actually had an issue with the way that my Mac is set up and the specific version of Chrome that I'm using. So to avoid any sort of issues relating to Chrome being funny, I switched over to Windows. Now, this is the tool itself. It actually has a very familiar interface. You can sort of see they've borrowed a lot of hints from Tableau itself with sort of this left uh, pane on the, on the left-hand side, of course, and a Discover pane on the right, which sort of links you off to Tableau resources. I think that's very deliberate just to try and make the tool feel familiar. Now, when you land on the tool, you do get an extra explanation of some of the testing types I talked about before. You've got the different types of testing. But in essence, what you have to do is you have to open a project. Now, a project is, uh, think of it like a set of tests that you're going to run. So in this case, I'm actually going to open a project and this is going to hopefully open a Dropbox folder. Now, I've put this on Dropbox because this is where I want to sync all my tests between the two computers. So I had tested it on Windows, then I'm switching over to Mac. And so I wanted to test everything in one place. So now I just select the project and select open. And when this opens, it should load up all the tests that I've run in the past. And when we do that, we actually get a summary. Now this summary just gives us an overview of everything that we've run already. Uh, you can see that some have failed, some have succeeded, and some have never been run. You can also see the total number of runs in each particular case. But in order to set up a test, there's sort of a process you need to go through, and it's actually quite a simple one. The first thing is you need to define a context. The context just basically tells the tool where this test is going to run. So let me go over here to the top right hand side, and you can see that I actually have the ability to define different places where the test can run. So these are essentially just connections. Think of them as that. And you can set one as the active context depending on the text you're trying to run. So I'll go back to this one here. In particular, you can see that I'm connected to my Tableau Online instance. This one is also connected to Tableau Online, but in a slightly different way. And this one is actually connected to a Tableau server directly. And again, it's connected in a slightly different way. So all of those are contexts, and I can switch between those contexts depending on the test or the type of test that I'm doing. Once you've set that, you can, of course, set any one of these to be the active context when the tests run. And that allows you to essentially switch between profiles or switch between environments very easily and quickly without having to constantly log in and do whatever you need to do. So I'll leave this at the moment on this one because it's actually what I'm going to be using for this test. Now, the other thing you'll see here is that these tests, I've named them in a very sort of basic way, but the way this tool works is actually quite smart. Essentially, this interface is just a user interface that actually controls a command line tool. I'll put an image up that Wisdom have on their website about the architecture of this platform. But in essence, it's just basically allowing you to build a set of tests which are stored as JSON object. JSON means JavaScript object notation. It's a simple way of storing data in web-friendly format that then allows you to pass that off to another application that can then take that, process it, and do something with it. Essentially, that information is passed on to the command line and the command line actually runs a range of different tools. The other thing to be aware of is that Wisdom is running a technology called Selenium. Now, Selenium is just a clever way of running a browser and controlling it. So in testing, you're of course going to be wanting to click on filters, go to parameters and change them. This is all this tool is doing. It's building a layer on top of that tool to allow you to do those things in a programmatic way and in a repeatable way. The very final thing is that some of the tools that Wisdom are using are actually tools that you should already be familiar with if you're used to testing with Tableau. A good example is Tabjolt. That's actually what they're using to do the performance testing when you go down to the performance testing settings, which we'll go through very shortly. Check out the timestamp if you want to jump ahead to that now. So now that we've set the context of how the tool works at a very, very, very basic level, let's actually look at some of these tests and see how they work. Let me go over here to the left-hand side. You can see that once I loaded my project, I actually opened up all of these same tests we can see here in the summary. And if I just simply go to the functional test, you can see that we have a workflow-like environment. So you can essentially add these tasks and these tasks happen in chronological order. So if I'm going to build a test, I'm gonna first need to log into Tableau. I'm gonna to need to open a visualization. I'm gonna to want to set the filter range to a specific set of values. You can see here that I've set it to the 1st of January, 2018. 
I might want to then check that some filters have specific values and you can see that that's all been set up here. So then now that that's all set up, you can do a very simple thing. You can run the test and you just need to make sure that you've set the right context. So in this case, the context is my Tableau server. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hit the run test button just so you can see it working. And when you do that, a couple of things happen. You can see the command line interface at the very bottom. It's essentially firing up the tools that it's going to be using. And it's kind of scary because Chrome opens up and it's completely automated and it's essentially controlling the browser. Chrome is actually saying that, look, I'm being controlled by a tool. Now, once it's doing that, it actually then starts carrying out the test. The first thing it will always do is log in, make sure you're you, and then it will go to the visualization and it will carry out the filtering. If I move my face here to the left, we'll hopefully see that it's doing that. You can see that I maybe interrupted it in the process, but no, it managed to finish that process just fine. And now that the test is done, it's obviously complete and we're pretty much good to go. You can see here on the bottom left that it says, okay, the testing was complete. Successes for partial successes, zero. Skips at zero, failures at zero. So that's the test run, very, very simple. Now, the great thing is I can, of course, repeat this test. So if I just wanna keep running this test, this is great. It's going to be making it very easy for me to just see how everything is working. And I can do this over time and it will just repeat the same test again and again and again. And this is just so much faster. In fact, I think this is doing it faster that I could manually do this myself. Imagine doing all these steps. It would take me considerably longer because it's not automated. So this is great. This just sort of proves the simplicity and the repeatability of the tool and how it works. If you're new to testing, this is probably blowing your mind. Uh, but if you're familiar with testing, this is probably really boring. So let's dig into what specific features this tool has for doing, in this case, functional tests. So over here on the left, you can see that I have a range of different tasks. And what I've tried to do is not dive into these too much, but I'm just going to cover the different sort of types of tests you can do with these. You can, of course, see that you've got some of the ones I've already talked about. Log into Tableau, open the visualization. You can also drive the browser, and you can also have another version, which is drive the browser for single sign-on. This is specifically useful when you're using single sign-on in an enterprise context. And there's a lot of customizations there that allow you to make sure that the interface is going to work as it should do. The other thing, you've got filter checks here, so you can set the date range, you can check the list, you can set the range in general. And um, if you keep going down, you can also do things like set the parameters, which is actually quite a useful thing to do. Now, you then have this big body of tools called assertions, and assertions essentially allow you to check um, particular behavior and make sure that the data that comes out of it actually matches something else that you already know the value to. So this is a really good way to go in and programmatically check exact results. And you can do this a couple of ways. You can do this by just using a filter, but you can even go down and do this and check this against the data warehouse. You can see here the assert SQL equals allows you to essentially take a SQL statement that you've run against the data warehouse and you can check the workbook against that SQL statement. So is the analyst building the workbook getting the exact same result as a SQL statement run against the warehouse directly. That's a simple, very powerful test you can do. You can do this on something as simple as the number of records to make sure that the database has been refreshed and that the workbook has actually picked it up. That's a very simple way of testing that. And then you could have the outcome of that sort of go off onto other processes and use things like the REST API to make sure that those things are working as expected. Now, this is a really sort of powerful set of tools, but again, I'm not an expert. So I highly encourage you to go out to uh, Wisdom's website and they also have a couple of YouTube videos that you can check out that dig into this a little bit deeper. If you want me to dig into these deeper in a deeper way, then let me know in the comments below and I'll spend a little bit more time going into the nooks and crannies of each and every one of these tools at some point in the future. Now that's the functional test. You can do a lot with that. You can build a whole bunch of different sort of workflows and get that to pretty much work the way you want it to work. Let's look at the next type of test, which is going to be a performance and stress test. Now, this is actually quite simple. When you go to add a task, you've only got uh, one option, the performance test. And when I click on this, you can see that it actually asks me a couple of very basic things. Number one, what type of test are you doing? It's a performance test. You can give it a name. Number two, how long do you want it to run for? Number three, uh, the concurrent clients. And in this particular case, what it's essentially asking is how many people do you want me to simulate? Do you want me to behave as one person or do you want me to behave as a hundred people? You can do all of that. And essentially what this is doing is it's building a test and it's using the test capability of Tabjolt. 
So these are the variables you'd actually put into Tabjolt to get that to work. The other thing you might then do is give it a username and password that it can use to log in and then do the test. And so when I do this test, this is actually going to take a while. So I'll speed this up in post so you don't have to wait a minute for it to run. But when you run this test, again, it's going to use my same context and it's going to open up the browser and do exactly the same thing. And as it's doing that, it's essentially just running the test in the background. Uh, some of these tests uh, can be done completely through the command line interface. You don't have to have this uh, interface open up at all. But when this test finishes, what we'll do is we have a look at the results and we'll see what it thinks about the performance of the server that I'm testing. Okay, so you can see that the test succeeded, it finished, everything's run and it actually writes a report. You can just see that it's labeled it here. It writes most of its reports in HTML and it stores them in a specific place where you've set up the project. But you can also look at these reports yourself. Now, if I just go back to this uh, task properties, when I set up the basic test, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can actually build in SLAs. SLAs are just a way of basically saying, look, this is the minimum level performance we'd expect. When you're doing a test like this, you don't do it over 60 seconds. You do it over a long period of time. And what you want to do is set some conditions. So in this case, I've set a performance goal of 10 seconds. 10 seconds tends to be, uh, in my mind, it's a pretty pretty generous performance test. Typically, I would say three seconds if I was using a modern web applications. But in the Tableau Analytics world, you're just going to call it 10 seconds for now. The availability goal is, look, 99.5% of the time, it was actually able to carry out the test. So that's my sort of, um, you know, me testing how many nines of availability I want with this particular workbook. But what you're really testing is the server. Then the AppDex goal. Now, the AppDex goal is something that was really new to me. AppDex is essentially a way of standardizing the way you measure performance and how users experience that performance. And there's a wonderful uh, video that I'll link to in the description below and that goes into this in a lot more detail that I can squeeze into this video here. But in essence, it's actually a really good way of standardizing performance in your organization given the two variables we've already talked about, which is performance and availability. You can also then exclude certain things from the test if you want to from this particular view. But let's check out the report that it created from the run that I just did. So you can see that I've actually run this test three times and each of those times it keeps the results. So I can actually tra track this over a period of time. If I open up the report success for the most recent run, I can actually look at this in a full screen view and it opens up this setup. Now here you can see a general overview of what's going on. You've got the artifact, which was essentially the test, the JavaScript uh, object notation that was used to run this test. And then you've got the app deck score. This is what it shows you first because of course this is the industry standard item. And what you can see here is that each of these things scored a one, which is excellent. Now, if I go to response times, I can scroll down and I can see here that look of the all the interactions, pretty much everything loaded in that 10 second time limit. You can see, in ten, see here the line that has been drawn for that 10 seconds. You can see the time, but you can also see a dot for each and every interaction. So it's actually repeating these interactions multiple times. And you can even see that there's a little bit of variance. For example, the interaction with the viz in this particular case was slightly slower. So that's not a bad thing. This happens uh, if you do things a thousand times, one of those times something else is going to cause an issue. Um, but it gives you this uh, information very easily. Now, the availability is pretty straightforward because I only ran this for 60 seconds. Of course, it's, you know, it's going to be up there for a long time. And you've got all the different sampling and information and sessions ID that it was basically uh, collecting. So this is sort of the granular information of every single thing that it was doing, all the small sort of habits and behaviors that it was running in the background. So this is a really nice way of doing this. Now, you're probably wondering, well, this is great data, but I don't want to here I want it in a database well that's another thing you can do if you go to the integrations you can connect it up to all of these tools email slack webhooks postgres and rollbar now I'm not too familiar with all of these and um, but what I do know is that the postgres database here is going to be handy because if instead of storing these as files or html files you probably want to be piping these into a database so you have a history of all these tests and it's stored in a way that allows you to then do analytics on that data in a more sort of resilient way. I like the webhooks and I like Slack and email because, of course, it's nice to know that a test has run and it's completed. Or it's also nice to be notified that a test has failed, which is probably the thing that's more pertinent. The Slack integration is going to allow you to send things to Slack to say exactly the same. So depending on how you work, whether you've gotten rid of email and you've used Slack instead, 
Um, all of these things are going to be great. And of course, the webhook will allow you to hopefully use this thing with Teams and other tools like that as well. So all of that functionality is built in there. It's a really sort of nice to use tool. So that's the performance test in a very simple nutshell. Um, I think it's really nice to have this here. Now, one of the interesting thing I noticed with this particular tool, it is actually just building a tab jolt test for you. If we go down here into the command line, you can see here that the created the tree successfully using tab jolt and it's using tab jolt 2022.1. And it's essentially creating something called a test plan. When you build tab jolt tests, you are actually building it using this uh, sort of technology. And so this is actually quite nice to know and see because if you use TabJot and you trust TabJot, this is giving, I think, more people an easier front end to that capability rather than just making it something that only the server admin can do, which I think is a nice to have. Now, the next thing I want to look at is regression testing. So let's go back and click on the regression test. So now you can see here that I previously run a regression test. Let's go back to tasks and just see how that is set up. Obviously here, you can see that I have two options. I can sign in with single sign-on. This is what essentially this option does. And then you've got the regression test here as well. And when you click on the regression test, what you all, all you're doing is you're basically going to get a visualization and you're gonna check it. And I'm gonna take you through the process of doing that by essentially retaking the baseline for this exact visualization. So here I have a test called regression test and I'm going to go and get a specific visualization. And in this case, the visualization has seven views. How do we take a snapshot? Well, over here on the right hand side, you hit baseline and it'll open this view. Now, this view is basically going to say, look, this is what I already have as my baseline. Uh, what would you like me to do? Do you want to refresh it? Do you want to update the current selection? Uh, maybe there's a new tab that's been added. So you want it to go and check if there's anything new. All of this is possible. You can also delete specific things from this snapshot. So let's just go ahead and refresh the snapshot so you see a genuine experience of how this works. Now, what it will do is it will go through using my variables again, log me in, go to the visualization, make sure it's got an understanding of that. Then it will load this view. This view then just starts scanning the dashboard. It essentially loads the dashboard up in lots of different sort of ways, and it checks various things on those dashboards. Now, those things it checks are based on a set of variables that you set up when you do the regression testing, and it takes a snapshot of what those things look like. Now, another useful thing here is that this is also going to be useful in instances, maybe where you want to see if something has changed when it shouldn't have changed. Maybe someone has removed the logo. Maybe someone hasn't actually updated something and you'd like a standardized way of testing that. This is going to help you do that. So I'll let this scan finish. It takes a little while because it has to go through each tab. You can see that it's simulating its way through that. And then when it's done, we'll have a look and see how the regression test actually runs. Okay, so you can see that the refresh has happened. It's taken a snapshot of everything else. Now, of course, you can select each and every one of these. And when you do, it gives you a screenshot. It checks everything that's there. I can actually click on each and every one of these and get a really thorough breakdown of everything that it's found. It's looking at the columns. It's looking at the filters. I can also go ahead and look at the data inside of that. So it's actually taking a pretty thorough snapshot of what's going on and it's persisting that in its uh, sort of database of information and then when you run a regression test against this stuff it's actually going to check it which is actually a really really good thing now it does this for each and every worksheet or each and every view so you can of course uh, make sure that everything is working as expected so here on the left we're going through the worksheet here on the top we're going through the different views so obviously as you change through these you'll get different metrics coming through and if, obviously when you click on these you'll see that update now the other thing you can do is you can obviously say to this tool okay we're done these snapshots all look good let's hit okay and we'll basically go back to this view and now it has that snapshot you can run the test and the test allows you to check these various things so you can refresh data on open use formatted values, check columns. You can even check an image, essentially allowing you to check if a logo is missing, or you can use it to check against another image. In essence, what this is doing is when it takes that snapshot, when you actually look at the snapshot, let's open up this baseline and let's go look at a specific view. You'll see that it loads up this image and it's actually going to check that image. Let's say you move the filter to the right hand side. It's actually going to be able to notice that and say, hey, look, this looks different. This is what's new about it. So that's a pretty powerful feature for making sure that everything is exactly how it should be. There's a couple of other checks you can do, check whether parameters exist, check to whether filters exist and all the related things you'd want to do with that. But essentially once you've done all that, you can just go ahead, hit run test, 
It's gonna ask you to save and run, which is fine. And when you save and run, now it's taking that baseline and it's going back to that visualization and it's checking against the baseline. So in this case, nothing should have changed because I've just literally taken the snapshot, but I just wanted to show you the mechanic of that working. And at least for this part of the test, the regression test looks identical to the baseline that we took before. Uh, it's essentially going through the same process when it checks it, but it's checking against a different item. It's checking against itself rather than against what it finds on the server, which is a really nice touch, I think. Okay, so you can see here that it's finished and that the tests have succeeded and everything's looking good. I can obviously go to the report. I can click on the report. We can go even full screen here and you've got a breakdown of the test itself. So if we click on this, you can see that, look, uh, Superstore uh, test, this is the actual whole workbook and you can see all the individual tests that were done in this particular tab. I can go to the forecast tab and exactly the same thing happens. And so this is, again, just a really nice way of breaking down the test, making sure that all of this stuff is visible and everything you've asked it to check has actually performed well. Again, you can export this out to the database and keep that there for history. But it actually keeps its own history over here on the left-hand side, as you can see. And this is a nice uh, touch. Now, the one thing I want to do is actually walk you through setting up a test. I've gone through all the different tests. We've done a functional test, performance and regression test. The cross environment test is actually very similar to a regression test. The only difference when you set this up is if you go to the task and look at this, you can obviously do a multi-site comparison. So you might have something on one Tableau site and there's something else on another Tableau site. And it's essentially just comparing the two and comparing the performance. You get a checklist of the things you can check, very similar to the regression test, but slightly different because it's looking across different environments. You can obviously specify the target sites as well and then run the test to compare the two. And there you go. You have your test results very similar to regression tests. So I won't run that now. But what I will do is we'll try and set this functional test up from scratch so you can see the exact process of doing this. So let me go ahead, delete everything from this view, and let's build a test together. Okay, so we're here. We've got absolutely nothing in this uh, page, and we're going to set up a functional test. Now, it gives you a few hints on the page about how to go about doing this, especially if you're logging into something like Tableau Online or if you're using single sign-on and you need to do a little bit more. So what we will do is we'll go ahead and just log into Tableau because I'm connecting to a Tableau server. This is super simple. And we'll just say log into Tableau and it will pretty much go away and do that. Now, you might want to run this already just to test that it works. And so you can do that, but I have a lot of confidence that this works. So we're not gonna worry too much about it. Now, the next thing is to open a visualization. So let's go ahead and bring this in. When we do that, of course, it doesn't know the visualization. So it goes red here just to tell us, hey, you need to pick a visualization. And this is actually what I want to show you. Let's go ahead and select search. You don't have to know the visualization off the top of the head. You can search for it. You can also browse the full server arc hierarchy. So here you can see that there's a demo site. And if I open this drop down, every single project that's on the site comes up. And if I go into any one of these projects, all the data sources and all the workbooks actually come up. So it's a massive list of stuff. If you're using this to browse an entire server, you don't want to have to be browsing that entire thing. This is actually a private Tableau service, so that's why this is sort of faded out. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing in the sort of blurry mess. But nonetheless, um, you can also search. So I can search for something uh, very simple, Superstore uh, test. And uh, when I actually expand this, it only shows me the places where that search has actually met something. So a much, much smaller set of items because the search is being applied. And I can do a couple of things. I can tick the whole entire workbook. And what that does, if you notice, it actually means it's going to pick seven views. Now, if I expand this workbook, I can actually just pick the specific views I want to test. Because I want to test um, just the overview tab, just to make sure that the filters are there, I'm going to untick these and go through uh, the rest of it. Now, the thing you might do if you tick everything is you might want to loop through various tests. So let's say I go through customers, forecast, overview, and performance, and I wanna check that a parameter exists in all of them. In that case, what I do is I actually tick all of them, go and select the uh, actual uh, test to check if the parameter exists and that the value has been set correctly. And what it actually does is it builds out a loop and it essentially go through each one of these sheets to check that that's worked and then you're pretty much good to go. But in this case, we'll just pick one uh, view or click OK. And now that we have the Tableau URL, it knows what the visualization is. We can actually start to do some things to it. So previously what I did is I set up a filter. So I'm going to set up a date range. And I know that on this particular uh, visualization is an order date field. Now, you don't have to know this either. This tool is actually quite smart. You can go and tell it to, hey, go take a snapshot of the workbook. So we'll go to the workbook and uh, 
allow you to take a snapshot. Now, one thing I can't figure out is uh, in this particular step, I seem to have to um, I seem to have to reselect the tool, and I think this is this might just be one of those uh, quirks to do with testing tools, where actually you have to be specific each and every time. What I'd love it to do is to pass the variables from the previous tool into this tool, so then I don't have to uh, sort of set this up again. If I was to, for example, select forecast here, this could lead to a failed test because, of course, I'm selecting a different uh, view to what I'd previously selected. So when I click on overview, you see you do get a snapshot over there and it's going to ask the snapshot to go and grab the filters, parameters, the image, all the summary data, all the uh, columns as well. Click OK and it will go off and get that. And it does that again by simply running Selenium logging in as you go into the workbook and grabbing that information. So there's a lot of opening and closing the browser that you do nothing. It's a weird experience when you do this for the first time and the computer is just controlling the browser for you. It's actually something that would probably cause security concerns in some organizations, but testing software sort of goes through very thorough testing. So I'm, I'm sure that organizations that do use this um, have happily sort of approved this software and don't find an issue with it. Selenium itself is incredibly common in the technology space as well. And as you can see, it's taken the snapshot. Now, if I go to a specific uh, sheet, these are all the sheets. I can say, look, on the sales map, I want you to filter in a specific way. Now, the date filter name, if I go to search that, you'll see that because it's taken the snapshot already, it already allows me to go and filter specific things. So I'll go select the order date. And uh, once the order date is in there, I can tell it that, look, this is a static filter. So I'm just going to give it two dates. I could give it a dynamic date. So I could say, hey, um, this is the uh, relative number of seconds between these two filters. Now, that is a very sort of uh, huge uh, number to be dealing with if you're trying to count the number of seconds in a week. Uh, so that, to me, I wish you could sort of get different units of time here. That would be a sort of a nice to see thing. But nonetheless, we'll just go with static and I'll just say 01, uh, 01 2019. And we'll have this go to uh, 01, 05, uh, 2019. So we'll essentially travel. I'm in the UK, so I'm using UK dates here where we go day, month, year. I don't know who would do anything else. Um, <laughs> but now that that's pretty much, uh, it's actually not correctly set. If you notice here, we also need to be specific about time. And I guess this is in instances where you might also be filtering date and time. But as far as the tool con is concerned, it's going to feed this in. And because there's no date, uh, time field, it's just going to keep the date in this particular thing. So again, I'd love this sort of quirk to be fixed where if I don't enter anything, it just gives me a zero zero rather than giving an error to enter a valid date. So now that that's done, we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to save this just in case something happens and I lose this. And you can see that it saves the job and it's essentially just building a JavaScript object notation. If you go over here to the right hand side, you can actually see that test. Now, the thing I like about this is that it's actually quite a predictable way of writing this JSON object. And because of that, what you can actually do is you can write a tool to build this JSON objects for you. So instead of going in here and building the tasks, you can actually sort of reverse engineer some of the common tasks you do and dynamically fill this information in depending on what you're trying to test. The benefit of doing that is you can then do really complex things. For example, you might take a Tableau workbook, you can open up the XML file for that workbook, look at all the things that are in that workbook, and then create a test run or test script based on what's in the workbook. So you could actually write something that tests every single filter, every single parameter to a range of values um, by looking simply at the workbook. So um, I'm not sure if someone's ever tried that, but I know it's absolutely possible because um, this sort of setup looks very similar to the XML setup that you get inside of a workbook and all the information is just inside of a workbook. So maybe that's a new tool that maybe someone can build, um, a tool that builds uh, test plans based on the workbook. Maybe Wisdom can take that feedback on and build something like that. Now, we've done that test. Now, one thing I want to also go and do is go and see if um, the filter has specific values. And so what I can do is I can go and use one of these assertion and you want to basically go and check that the specific values exist in the filter pane. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Now, because we've taken a snapshot, it's actually got the snapshot ready to go. So we'll click OK. And um, what I should actually do is to select the specific sheet. So let's go and select. Um, let's do sales map. And we'll go to search. And you'll see the sales map has a region filter. 
and it's a categorical list, which is good. And what I'm going to ask it to do is to check the values. And the values I expect to see are uh, north. And we just scroll down here, uh, south and central. So do all of these values exist? Okay. So now that we've done that, the test is pretty much good to go. I'll go ahead and save it again. And now I think we're ready to run this. Now, if this fails, it's probably because of my error here. So let's go ahead and run the test and we'll see it run through the entire test. Now, let's see if I've done this properly. So we should see it open up the browser. It will first log in. And then having logged in, uh, what we should see is uh, it open up the test window that essentially loads up the visualization. Now, this is going to happen very, very quickly. So I'm going to put myself on the top right hand side here. We're going to see it filter over here on the right hand side. You can see that, that filter worked and uh, it actually went and checked the values faster than I could blink. Uh, and we know that here because if we go down here, you can see invoking assert filter equals task. OK, and it's basically checked everything fine. Now, what was interesting is in a previous test, I actually got a readout that specified that these were the right fields. So I just want to check that this is correct. So list categorical, uh, check values, enable to use formatted values in your filters. That is exactly correct. And this is, yeah, that's just the name. So I think it has done what I expected to do. I'm probably not using this tool to the best of its capability as well. But again, I just thought it was a really interesting thing to explore. Now. In using this tool, I've had this tool now for a while. I've actually used it probably over a total of, um, you could say probably over the course of an entire day. I've been in it for that period of time. In order to use it, I actually got a demo from Wisdom themselves. They should have walked me through how it works. I had a really good scripted demo. I can't fault that whatsoever. And it's pretty straightforward and I really, really like it. One of the things that I don't have context for is what other tools are like. And for the record, there are other tools that do this. Uh, Wisdom is not the only player in this market, specifically working with Tableau. The other competition is also just no tool. <laughs> Doing what you've done today, is Wisdom easy to use in some of these tools? And broadly speaking, I'd say yes, it is. I think one of the tougher parts of using this tool, though, is just understanding its quirks. And maybe this is because I'm quite used to Tableau and I'm quite used to sort of modern tools. There are a few quirks. You saw me sort of talk a bit about them. So, for example, the date range, if you don't sort of fill this information out and it just stays with the dash, you could get an error where the test doesn't run. So once you know these things, once you've sort of worked with this for a while, you start to pick up these habits. The other thing that I think I found very difficult and I haven't really shown you in this video is connecting to Tableau Online. And this is sort of caused partly by Tableau, but also because I think there's a lot of change going on in the Tableau space when it comes to APIs. In essence, I struggled to get Tableau Online uh, working when I had two-factor authentication enabled. And Tableau enabled that right at the point that I was testing this. And so I don't have an honest perception of how this tool works with Tableau Online in a two-factor environment. I think it is important to do that because in essence, you're going to need to be able to work with one of the biggest parts of Tableau in order to use this tool. Um, but for the record, it's not that I don't think that it can't connect. You can see here that I actually have an online connection here to their test site. And when I do the test connection, everything works absolutely fine. And we can actually go ahead and build a new test. Let's go ahead and build a new functional test. And we'll call this testing Tableau online. And we'll click add. This will give us a blank canvas. We'll go over here and switch uh, my variable and set my Tableau online test instance with wisdom as the default context. So we'll go in, log in to Tableau and we'll open a visualization. Let's go ahead and search for that visualization. You can see here that I'm connecting to Tableau online. It's absolutely found that and it's worked exactly as you'd expect. We'll go and grab Superstore and we'll grab the same overview tab that we've been grabbing. We'll click OK and that's pretty much our visualization ready to go. And so it's not impossible to connect to Tableau online. It's technically possible. What I couldn't debug is why my specific environment on Tableau online just wasn't able to work with this. It also doesn't help that I have a Tableau Online instance that's run by the data dev uh, team at Tableau. So my version of Tableau Online is actually a beta instance. So it doesn't quite match the generic version of Tableau Online that everyone uses in a production setup. So it's, it's specifically for testing. So it's not going to work like the real one. And I've come across common bugs actually with that specific instance that don't exist in the main instance of Tableau Online. And so it's been actually really hard to prove. So that's definitely something to go and check out. Now, I know that Tableau 
and Wisdom probably don't have this issue elsewhere because if we go over to the Wisdom website, you can see here they've actually got a really nice white paper that I was reading before I made this video. Um, they have some good documentation on the different uh, testing types. But if we actually go to Wisdom, let's just go type in um, their website. We can actually take a look at some of their customers and who they have using it. And you have to sort of scroll down a little bit. Um, if I actually go to the very top, I can look at products and we go to Wisdom Ops, um, which is specifically what's being used in this specific instance. Um, if we scroll down, uh, we do get a very brief run through of some of their larger customers, I'm assuming. So let's keep going down. It actually works across multiple tools. So it's not just uh, Tableau. It also works with Power BI and SAP Business Objects, which is, I think, where the business actually started. But it's being used at all these organizations. And I'm not sure if it's been used in context of Tableau itself. You'd have to ask these organizations themselves. I don't have a good picture of that. But I do know that Wisdom have a very active user group. They have lots of customers across the world that are using this. And in the Tableau space, they're actually definitely one of the more popular customers. And um, there's a couple of other players, but it's pretty much Wisdom and one other player, I can't remember their name, who use this tool. So that's pretty much it from me. I don't want to sort of carry on too much longer without some specific guidance from you guys on what kind of tests you want to see me run in this, if you want to see me run anything at all. I'll also kind of judge the feedback based on the response to the video. I think this is one of those videos that most people are going to find when they Google testing or when they've been asked to go and investigate testing with Tableau. You'll come across the video and hopefully I've helped you sort of think about testing in a better way. But more importantly, I've hopefully shown you what is out there in terms of tools that you can use to automate and improve the way you test your workbooks. As ever, if you've made it this far, you're an absolute fan. So thank you for watching. If you've made it this far and you're not subscribed though, um, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Over 80% of people who watch my videos don't actually subscribe, which is um, absolutely fine. I don't mind you getting the value from this whatsoever in whatever way I'm here to help, but you can help me out a lot by just hitting the subscribe button so you find out about new videos as soon as they go live. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.